Hello, this is Lolly. Today I have a new project for you. I have a video which I'll give you the link to in which I made these two pins out of mini popsicle sticks. Uh, but I decided I wanted to make a Santa, so I have pre-glued the four um, mini sticks onto the uh, cardboard and now I have my flesh tone paint, which is a joke because that's whose flesh looks like this color. I don't know. <laughs> Alrighty, so I want to do, do this for the Santa's face. I'm not worried about the top where my thumb is because I'm going to paint that red for um, for his hat. So again, this one is Folk Art Skin Tone 949 that I'm using. I'm giving it a little heat there to dry it out well. And then um, if it needs another coat, I would always go over it right then. What I'm doing is I'm measuring, and I think I want to do three quarters of an inch down from the top. I'm going to draw a line here so that I know where to paint the red. Okay, so here goes my line. And then I'm going to use Deco Art Santa Red paint. And I'm gonna give that a nice coat across the top. And then once that's done, I realize that it's not quite uh, red enough for me. So once I get a little uh, blow drying on that, then I'm going to hit this again with a second coat of the red. You can see I'm going over the tops too to make sure all the tops of the popsicle sticks and the sides as well are coated. And I don't worry about giving those, the edges, a second coat, just the very top after I get it with my blow dryer here. You may notice that when I use blow dryers to uh, dry paint projects, I always use that, a blow dryer. I don't use a heat gun, and the reason is a heat gun is for dry embossing, in my way of thinking. And it is extremely hot and not enough air, and it, I've had it, besides burning my fingers, I've had it also bubble up um, the project I was working on and melt things and I don't want to see that happen so I use a blow dryer which is a hair dryer and it's not excessive heat and it's a little more air and so it does exactly what I need it to do without damaging my project which I don't want to see happen and so um, what I do here is just some black paint this is just the Masters Touch black paint permanent black uh, from Hobby Lobby it's their brand and I'm just putting the end of my paintbrush in there to do his eyes and I could have gone ahead and shaded his face first, but I, I went ahead and did this. I figure it's not going to bother the black paint. So I do let that dry uh, really well before I come back and do this next stage. So this is when I'm going to take this other paint, and this is Folk Art, and the color is Asphaltum 476. And you can't see, but I do have water in my paint palette tray up there. It's just off camera. So I get my brush really wet. I have an angled brush. Then I dip only the, the point, the fine point there in the asphaltum. I'm trying to get a good combination here and I have too much water. So I just dip the very tip into the paint again and I'm playing around here to kind of float a little shade there. I realize it's not enough paint so I go back in and do it. So what that does is it gives us a nice shading and I'm doing it on the sides of his face as well. At first I started to shade the bottom of his face but I realized that I'm not going to need to do that because the bottom of his face will be covered with the fur. So. Yeah, I didn't need to do that. So while uh, I'm doing this, I get out this pink color, which is also the Master's Touch brand, Persian Red BA282. And that's the Hobby Lobby paint. And I'm going to get my brush nice and wet and then get a little bit of the pink and see if I can just get a thin, uh, kind of a wash of that color for his cheeks. And as I do that, I realize you can hardly see it on this peachy color uh, skin tone. So I keep adding more and more of that Persian red color to try and get it a little darker. I'm not really doing really dark cheeks, just want a little hint of pinkness there. And then, there you go there, you can see how much I've got there. I think the one cheek is bigger than the other, but you know, you won't be able to tell too much once I get the, his beard on there. And then I decide that I want a little bit of a nose, so I'm going to get a smaller paintbrush and I'm going to paint an oval for his nose and that will be shown right above his beard and so I'm using this uh, Persian red almost full strength but I realize I need some kind of accent to kind of make it like a, a rosy uh, rosy nose so I'm going back into my Santa red here 
uh, on the, we're using the same paintbrush and just kind of blending it in with that Persian red there, that pink color, to give me a little oval nose. And now it really shows up a whole lot better than it did before. Very cute, very cute. Still working that paint in there. Okay. So um, one of the things I didn't do yet was to do the white, and this is the Deco Art uh, Snow White, I believe, or Cool White. And I'm just going to use again the end of the paintbrush to get a little sparkle on his eyes, little dab, because by now the eyes are dry enough to do that. And then I decide I want a little tiny um, highlight on his nose. And I went to get some of the white and I realized my brush was kind of fanned out even though I store it tip up. So I dipped the brush in the water and then I smoothed all the bristles back together with my fingers and then I put it in the white. And now you can see there's a little tiny highlight on his nose. Get that all aside, wipe everything up and dry it out again. So there I am with my blow dryer. And so the next stage is going to put all his glitter on there before I proceed with putting any fur on his hat or anything uh, or anything for his beard. And I'm using the Deco Art Twinkles. It's called Craft Twinkles, and the color is Crystal. This is really chunky glitter on a clear, uh, like a varnish. So I just brush that over the whole thing with a soft brush, making sure that I kind of spread the glitter part of it out well, otherwise it tends to clump in one spot. And then you'll want to rinse your brush out with soap and water really soon after doing that. You don't want it to harden on your brush. You'll never get that glitter out. Very cute. The bottle does not say how long it takes to dry, so I let it dry a couple of hours. Now I want to come back and I want to give his hat a little felt brim and so this is the part of the hat that's going to looks like it's rolled up and has the like fur on it so I'm just cutting a little strip out here just a thin strip and I think what I want to do is wrap it around at the back because I think it'll give it a little extra interest as opposed to just cutting it off on the left and right so where's my Fabri-Tac <laughs> I had to go get that so a little strip of Fabri-Tac right across the front along the where the two paint lines um, meet and I didn't worry too much about making sure that the red was a perfect line because I knew I was going to cover it up with this little felt piece and now I'm going to do a little fabric tack across the back and tuck those little pieces in around the end and on, around the back side. This is such a cute project. I have done something like this in the past where I've just taken some red fabric and glued it on to the wooden piece to be his hat and that way you get a nice pointy hat on the top but I wanted to leave this looking like popsicle sticks so his hat has the little funny um, four bumps across the top getting it to stick and stay now I have these little wooden not wooden excuse me the, the plastic um, holly buttons from Hobby Lobby I'm going to cut the shank off the back with a shank remover and glue that on there with some E6000 And once I do that, I start looking at the beard. Now, I what am I going to do? So I have this faux fur that I had bought and bought and that I had purchased from Joanne on clearance. It was a remnant. I'm going to trace a pattern of the bottom of his face. So I have a piece of paper to put on my uh, faux fur and cut out in the shape of his beard. Now, you'll see me uh, decided to do this, and I realized I need to make a little notch under there for where his nose would be, and so I put a little notch in the top, and I start cutting it out, and I realize I want the beard to come down to a point, so I end up putting this down and drawing out the little point here for the point of the beard, and then I resume cutting this pattern out, and this is just a piece of cardstock I have. Now it's tricky, I've never done it. This is my first time to play with faux fur, but I realized if I were just to cut through this, I would be cutting all the hair and making it short. I don't want to cut the hair fibers, I just want to cut the fabric that the hair is attached to. First I'm looking at the nap or the direction that the fur is going because I want to cut it in a way that it's naturally flowing the way his beard would. So that's why I picked this part of this fabric to place my pattern on and I'm just tracing it with some of the, my pencil right there. So when I go to cut it out, I'm kind of parting his hair the hair on this faux fur so that I'm not cutting the long strands of hair. You see me separating that fur right there. 
I want, and I'm just barely opening my scissors. And I want to show you the difference. I'm barely opening. They're opening only a teeny little bit as a, like, um, like this, as opposed to opening them all the way like that and cutting through all of the fur. there that is so adorable and you can see how long it is I could have made I could have cut out a little shorter piece of fabric and not made it quite so long but this beard look how long it is it's so cute I just keep playing with it it feels really soft and I'm gonna push it up under his nose and get my Fabri-Tac back out and glue that in place by putting a generous amount of Fabri-Tac on here right under his cute little pink nose could have added a little fur up the sides of his face but I wanted to have a little more of him showing there <laughs> so you could, it's very cute I love it I'm just kind of fiddling around before that Fabri-Tac dries out look how adorable is that just want to keep playing with it he's so adorable look at that I decided instead of putting a pin on the back of him to make him an ornament. So I just got a piece of ribbon here. It's got it's kind of a burgundy with gold edges on it and I'm just tying a knot on the one end and I'm going to glue that on the back with the um, E6000 and there we go. Trim that fuzzy stuff off and put it on the back here and then I realized that um, I would have to hold this for about 10 minutes because it's kind of bumpy and it's kind of fiddly and I keep playing around and in the end I decide just to put a piece of scotch tape on the back to hold that in place for me so I can you know keep uh, I can finish this up and take pictures and not worry about holding it so the tape is really only a temporary fix and then what I think I'm going to do on all three of these this one the snowman and the gingerbread is to go ahead and paint the backs to make them look a lot nicer aren't these adorable they're so cute make sure you look at the link down below for the video on how to do the snowman and the gingerbread as well and the instructions <laughs> 